fire is scarce, my men. Don't fire at the enemy till you see the whites of their eyes. Twas afternoon the 17th, the Yankees did surprise. The British troops at Bunker Hill, an army twice their size. With holding fire till they could see the whiteness of their eyes. The Yankees made the Redcoats pay so dearly for their prize And left the British generals fearful and demoralized More than 40 years ago, CV-17, bearing the name and carrying the message of Bunker Hill, sailed repeatedly in harm's way in deterrence of tyranny's threat. On this bright morning, we are present to christen CG-52 with that same proud and valiant name, Bunker Hill. Today we officially name the fifth ship in the Aegis class of guided missile cruisers, without question one of the most important shipbuilding programs underway today in this country. This is the first warship to be equipped with a vertical launch missile system. When combined with the sophisticated electronics of our Aegis system, VLS makes Bunker Hill the most powerful ship ever for the protection of the Navy's battle group. Bunker Hill as the fifth ship of the Ticonderoga class and the third to be assigned to the Pacific Fleet is special even beyond the tremendous capabilities she shares with her predecessors. The challenge facing our Navy at sea today demands that we take every advantage of our great nation's technology, exemplified here in Bunker Hill, so that our crews with their intellect and skill will be more than equal to the strength of sheer numbers. The vertical launching system that is Bunker Hill's main battery is an important enhancement of all the inherent capabilities of her overall design. The ship before you brings added fighting capability to the Aegis cruiser class. Her Tomahawk missiles will seek out targets at sea and on land, hundreds of miles away. Her magazines will carry one-third more missiles than her predecessors. And her command system will ensure accurate targeting and employment of these capabilities in a unified battle force. Incorporation of these advances did not come easily to those responsible for engineering and construction of this ship and her combat system. The Aegis team nationwide was once again called upon to take on new challenges. CG-52 represents the results of their outstanding efforts. I must tell you that February 17th, 1984, I had an opportunity to see what had happened to that first new Aegis cruiser that had come out of these waterways. It was a long way from the peace and tranquility that we find here in this port on the Mississippi. Pascagoula is a long way from Beirut, Lebanon. But let me tell you and let me assure you that when that ship was called by our government to join the Navy, to join the fleet, to do its duty in the front line. It was ready, it was capable, and it was good. But let's hope that when the Bunker Hill sails, the Bunker Hill will sail proud, and the Bunker Hill will sail well, and the Bunker Hill never has to go into action. But if it does, I can assure you it's ready. As you know, the battle for Bunker Hill 
was one of our very first steps in gaining our independence as a nation and its consequences are reverberating here today. The courage of these early patriots was recognized and honored when a large Essex-class carrier was christened Bunker Hill on the first anniversary of the Pearl Harbor attack. On the morning of 11 May, while supporting the Okinawa invasion as flagship for Vice Admiral Mark Mitcher, Bunker Hill was hit by two kamikaze planes, suicide planes, and was severely damaged by fierce, raging gasoline fires and explosions. Forty years have passed since those large air-sea battles of the Pacific War. And as one might expect, today's weapons are far more threatening to surface ships than the kamikaze. Today, the defense must destroy supersonic anti-ship missiles launched by multiple aircraft and surface ships from considerable distances. Fortunately for the nation, the Navy has a valid and effective means, the Aegis weapon system, to meet this threat. It has the capability of tracking hundreds of potential targets simultaneously in the air, on the surface, and under the sea, and the capability of destroying them. The Aegis system built into this magnificent ship is in its most effective and advanced form with the vertical launch system for its missiles. We come now to the highlight of today's ceremony, the actual christening of, of Bunker Hill. The Navy has chosen this sponsor for Bunker Hill, uh, a marvelous, delightful lady, the wife of our distinguished principal speaker, Mrs. Kitty Scalarpa. In the name of the United States and in commemoration of the historic American Revolutionary War battle, I christen thee Bunker Hill. When it was said and done, my friends, what good did it provide? The hill ran red and men were dead on each and every side. But battle waged on Bunker Hill, proclaimed both far and wide. They'd met the best and stood the test with stubborn Yankee pride. And garrisons of British guns would never stem the tide. regarded as the finest in the world and characterized by revolutionary technology comes a new ship an Aegis ship that brings to the fleet unprecedented firepower and a new strike capability a ship that is making naval history and permanently changing the tactics of surface warfare a ship that on 21 May 1986 in the Gulf of Mexico successfully demonstrates the first missile firings from a vertical launching system of a U.S. Navy warship. The name of this revolutionary ship, Bunker Hill. Testing of the Navy's first Mark 41 Vertical Launching System, or VLS, is the primary focus of Bunker Hill's second at-sea trial, known as Trial Bravo. For the first time in a shipbuilder's trial, standard missiles with warheads are loaded out in canisters designed for VLS. Vertical launch gives us a couple new things, and, uh, and uh, in fact, the way we're handling this missile right now, and, it, and it'll give us a lot more capabilities, a lot more missiles to fire, a quicker response time, a lot of advantages to vertical launch, and I'm just enthusiastic as I could be about the opportunity to be a part of it. As compared to the guided missile launching system of previous ships, 
the LS can launch a greater variety of missile types, including the long-range Tomahawk. Holds nearly 40% more missiles in the same space and attains greater availability since each missile is fired from its own canister. On a quiet, rainy morning, Bunker Hill is eased out of her berth. Passing the bell buoy, she begins her historic voyage into the Gulf. Once on station, weapons structural testing commences with the pounding of five-inch rounds for six hours. During the next four days, her Aegis test team, numbering more than 500 from Navy and contractor organizations all over the country, test every major element of the ship. From close-in weapon system tracking exercises. To high-speed maneuvers and sustained full-power runs. To testing of an SH-60B Hilo, the airborne platform of the Light Airborne Multipurpose System, or LAMPS. In a variety of off-board tactical exercises, LAMPS anti-submarine mission capabilities are tested. While on board, the Hilo is landed and hanged. As the trial progresses, all test results are reported to the Trial Coordination Center. For a ship with such major changes from previous Aegis cruisers, Bunker Hill has remarkably few trial cards denoting problems. Although her Aegis weapon system successfully defends itself against mock attacks throughout the trial, it is with the real engagements that the excellence of her anti-air warfare system is evident. But before the warhead missiles are fired, the structural integrity of the vertical launching system is proven with launch test vehicles. Yeah, the range is clear. We're at T-minus one minute county. West batteries release track Final seconds are counted for her first launch. unquestionably proven. The ship's force is ready to fire the Navy's most advanced surface-to-air weapons on the following morning. The day begins with the pre-fire briefing. And as of yesterday, we went through these long checklists specifically to make sure that we're not testing ourselves in this evolution. What we're doing is we're proving the system. And so we want to make sure that every single step we make is right and we're at the point now that we've all been waiting for. Let's go out and prove that the system worked perfectly. And that's what we're setting out to do. So let's continue on the professional theme here. This is what we want to do all the time. We're, the planning is finished, and now it's time to execute. Key Navy and industrial leaders fly in to personally witness this momentous event. This is a big day in my life, big day in the life of Bunker Hill, big day in the life of the United States Navy. 
A BQM-34 Alpha drone launched from Tyndall Air Force Base attacks following a radial inbound course. All stations air, D-10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 4, 3, 2, 1, Bunker Hill's force responds with a standard missile. Birds away, track 1502. Attack air terminal homing, illuminator one, track 1502. Mark intercept. Oh. Attack air, Aegis evaluates kill. Speed 114 knots on the debris. A successful intercept. The farthest on the Eglin range for an Aegis ship. Yeah, it's all going straight down. Straight down. After this first intercept, at a range only possible with recent missile improvements. One, zero. Bunker Hill scores again against a second drone. Today, you probably know that you created naval history in the sense that it's the first time that a warship has launched a standard missile. After this first intercept, at a range only possible with recent missile improvements. One, zero. Bunker Hill scores again against a second drone. So, through Bunker Hill, BLS brings to fruition an even more capable Aegis weapon system in an engineering triumph made possible only through the interdependent efforts of the Naval Sea Systems Command, RCA, Martin Marietta, Ingalls Shipbuilding, and General Dynamics. Just as the Battle of Bunker Hill spurred the Revolutionary War, so is the ship Bunker Hill launching a revolution in surface warfare. With the flawless demonstration of the vertical launching system, the volunteers of Bunker Hill are again influencing the course of military history. Standing on the deck with a fire. 
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the commissioning of the world's most sophisticated cruiser, Bunker Hill. The ceremony which you are about to witness is a time-honored tradition of the United States Navy. Thousands of ships have undergone the magical transition from the silent and unmanned vessel, which you now see before you, to a warship, fully manned and fully alive. The world's finest commissioning crew, hereafter known as plank owners, is in formation and ready. Today, we honor the heroes of Bunker Hill by naming this ship in their memory. We also pay tribute to the men and women who built her and to the men who will sail her. A little about the people who built her. We witness today one of the truly great success stories of government-private relationship that is sending to the fleet the very best that this country can give to assure that we can deter and defend against anyone who might attempt to deny us access to the sea. And with the Bunker Hill, we have represented the best that corporate America can provide. Great companies like Litton Industries, RCA, Martin Marietta, Raytheon, and thousands of other companies manned and operated by Americans who are providing the services and products that make up Bunker Hill. We Americans enjoy some remarkable freedoms, unparalleled in the history of mankind. Walking down the pier today, I saw many members of the Bunker Hill Association, men who served in the Second World War on that aircraft carrier, defending these same freedoms. This ship that we commissioned today is intended to protect those freedoms for many years to come, not only for our generation, but for our children's generation. Let us go back to a May day, May 20th, 1986. It was early morning, the sun was coming up, the sky was red, and there was a ship in the Gulf of Mexico. It was this ship. It was about to conduct one of the most important trials in the life of this ship. It was going to fire its first missile from its launching tube. There were sweaty palms in CIC. The captain watched the clock. He got the word the range was free, and he said fire. It's the beginning of a revolution. It, this ship is part of a revolution, just as its name, Bunker Hill, is associated with revolution. I represent those responsible for engineering the requirements into the ship now called Bunker Hill. She is a capable ship. Her design, machinery, and combat systems are the best that the mind of man can devise and American industry produce. She is equipped with the most capable surface-to-air missile system in the world today. It is fitting that this commissioning should take place here, near the site of one of the most important early battles in the American War for Independence, the Battle of Bunker Hill. We lost the Battle of Bunker Hill, but we won the war because of it. The bravery of the patriots against the British 
and the inspiring story of the battle spread throughout the colonies. The British forces were not invincible, and the drive for independence became irresistible. Down through the years, Boston Harbor and the Boston Navy Yard have been witness to some of the Navy's greatest days. And all of us in Massachusetts are proud of the long association between our Commonwealth, our craftsmen, and women, and the Navy of the United States. So I join with the many people assembled here today in commending all who were involved in the design, construction of this brilliant ship. But I pay the highest tribute of all to those in uniform who will sail this ship. We salute your patriotism and commitment. Captain Cross. I hereby place United States ship Bunker Hill in commission. God bless and God speed all who sail in her. Commander Wheeler, call the crew to quarters. Aye, sir. Bandmaster, sound off. Bunker Hill crewman, man your ship. Captain, the watch is set. The ship is manned and the crew is at quarters. Request permission to bring Bunker Hill to life. Very well. Bring Bunker Hill to life. Aye, sir. Ship's company, bring Bunker Hill to life. As commanding officer, USS Bunker Hill, Admiral Davis, I proudly accept command of the United States ship Bunker Hill. Every ship has a sponsor. We have a very special one, Miss Kitty Scalrap. Ever since she broke that bottle of champagne over the bow a little over a year ago, she has been in our thoughts and in our memories and in our hearts. As was mentioned by several speakers that preceded me, we have a lot of high tech on this ship. It's probably the state of the art. But anybody that goes to sea knows the importance of the man. But please take a moment out and meet the man who makes it go, the finest crew in the United States Navy. Please join with me in saluting these fine people, the crew of the Bunker Hill. We in Bunker Hill will continue to carry out the proud tradition of this historic site where we assemble today and of the USS Bunker Hill, CV-17. Bless now the captain and crew who will sail her, for she has truly come alive. But above all, Lord, 
we pray for the land she will defend. Our nation has waged war, but not worshipped it, has won the greatest power, but not sought it, has wrought the greatest weapon of destruction, but not desired to use it. Inspire us, Father, that we may achieve for her a future worthy of her past. Amen. Nice evening. Oh.